Good evening, and I was wondering if I should do this video because, you know, I was thinking I should just focus on scripture and focus on Paul's evangel. And after this, I'm going to go through all of Paul's letters and um, try to do as many videos as I can, just teaching and talking about truths in, in Paul's letters. So I am going to do that, but I, I have to get this out of my system because with the lies that are going on today with um, the vaccines and the coronavirus and all that kind of stuff and the beast system forming the same entities that are driving this beast system now are the same entities that use the same strategies with regard to the lies that I'm going to talk about in this video and that I mentioned in my previous video about Satan's two great lies which one is lying about where we are and then lying about who Jesus Christ and who God is so today I'm going to get right into talking about the first lie of trying to lie to us about who we are and where we live and when I was thinking about whether I should do this or not it's like I should focus on Paul's message but the thing is, it's it's nice, and I had to say this to myself, and I think sometimes when we're in the body of Christ, we have to say this too. We're used to fighting religious people. We're used to fighting Christians and trying to expose the lies of Christianity with the truth of Paul's gospel, um, and we get caught up in that, which which is good, because we need to expose those lies, because Christianity believes in a fake Jesus. They believe in a Jesus that is going to uh, just give us an offer and then when we decline that offer he's going to torture us for all eternity so there's no love there's no sovereignty there um, that's a fake Jesus the real Jesus we know uh, controls all puts forth uh, a plan that we all have to walk through that involves evil and then in the end through his death and tomb and resurrection he brings everybody back to him each in their own order, but all based on the blood of the cross, will be with God in the end. So we know that. Um, I'm not going to talk about all that. I'm going to get into that later. But we fight the religious establishment a lot in our minds, even if we don't, you know, openly go out and interact with people. You know, that's something that we have a constant struggle with every time I hear a message from Christianity that's a lie I get a pain in my stomach and I just get angry I don't know if it's selfish anger meaning that I you know I know the truth and you don't I want you to know that I know the truth you know it's probably a selfish thing most of the things that I do are selfish but nonetheless I oppose it and disagree with it but that's my fight in my mind. Some of us actually go out and talk to people about it. Uh, and that's another battle that we have to go through. Making videos and getting comments back. That's another battle. But it's with, a lot of times, religious people. And that's nice that, that our battle at times is with religious people because we know where they're coming from. And even though there's so much dirt and lies to get through in order to try to present the truth... We're comfortable with that, in a sense. But that's nice. There's millions and billions of people that can't even get into the arena of believing God because of the lies that Satan has told about who we are and where we live. So we can all sit on our perch and just focus on the religious and focus on separating Paul's gospel from the rest of the Bible and telling Christians that they believe lies but what about all the people that can't even enter the sphere of believing in God because they believe the lies about the earth that we live on and the universe that we live in because most of the people I know that genuinely love and genuinely embrace the message that I tell them about, yeah, Jesus Christ, there's no eternal hell. Jesus Christ 
is going to save all mankind. The people who love that message are not Christians or not religious people. They're the people that don't even believe in God, really. Why? Why don't they believe in God? Because they believe in what they think is science. And that science teaches them that God is far away or non-existent. So it is important to talk about this because there's a whole bunch of people, good people, that otherwise would embrace God if they weren't sold lies about where we live. If they truly knew where we lived and what this was, then they would believe in God. So it is an important topic. So I'm putting to bed whether I should do this video or not. For members of the body of Christ, if you already believe in Jesus Christ, you know what he is, then that's great. You really don't, it doesn't really matter to you. But it matters to the people who can't even come to accept that there is a God. This video and understanding where we are and what we are makes all the difference in the world. So they can just get into their arena. And then they'll be even more open to accepting the true Jesus Christ that is the Savior of all mankind and in control of all. So what are some of these lies that, that Satan tells about where we live? Well, we go to scripture here. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. As for the earth, okay, so God created the heavens and the earth. Didn't create hell. Just side note there because hell doesn't exist. Nowhere mentioned in scripture. But then God is simply silent on the heavens and he moves his attention to the earth only. So as for the earth, and then everything else has to do with the earth. And God keeps focused on the earth until the letters of Paul, where our celestial realm is talked about. But the book of Genesis and elsewhere in scripture goes into some detail about this creation. I'm going to talk about this scripture in relation to real science. Before that, however, it is necessary to discuss why this earth creation would be lied about. Why? Has Satan lied about earth and where we are and who we are? Why? Because the adversary Satan wants us to feel insignificant. He wants humans to think that God is far away or that he does not exist. Evolution, the Big Bang Theory, and Spinning Ball Earth Theory all have been used to distance or even exclude God from his creation. Evolution puts time. Billions and billions of years is the ultimate God. Give it enough time. Primordial slime will become a cell. Then a self-replicating cell will magically become male and female. And eventually transform into all sorts of complex beings. This is impossible. It's not science. Evolution is a lie and there is simply no credible proof for this process. Slime does not randomly, nor by any natural selection, develop the complex features of humanity and our mechanics. How does laughter evolve? How does the beauty of a girl's eyes drive me insane? How does a self-replicating cell become male and female? These are all questions that evolution cannot answer. Where are all the transient... The transition species, there should be billions and billions of species that are half alligator, half fish, half aardvark, half bird. There's none of them. None of them, anywhere. No proof for it. Darwin, well, and I, if you do a real study on evolution and want to know the truth, you, you will come to the same conclusion. The Big Bang Theory is the idea that at some point, and I'm reading from a paper, so if you think I'm reading, I am. Uh, but this is a paper that I wrote a couple years ago. The Big Bang Theory is the idea that at some point, everything came from nothing and evolved from a singularity some 13.8 billion years ago. Hydrogen formed and eventually became stars that included the raw material that would eventually create humans. What? How do these people know what happened 13.8 billion years ago? It's pretty obvious that if you don't have the answer to the creation or you don't want to believe in God, just add billions of years to your theory and you can make up any ludicrous idea you want. 
If I took a crap in a room and came back 13.8 billion years ago, it would be a beautiful, amazing woman. That's more believable than this theory because in my crap, there's all kinds of organi- life more than there would be from nothing. So it's a better start and more realistic than the theory of evolution. It's amazing to me that people believe this crap. And in the same breath, they say the creation story in the Bible is nonsensical. People believe this garbage of evolution and Big Bang because they don't want to believe in God. However, evolution and, and this is a key point here. However, evolution and Big Bang do explain why Earth is rotating and flying through space at massive speeds. This is what I talked about before. People, many people discredit evolution and the Big Bang Theory, but they still think we're flying through space at ridiculous speeds and spinning through Earth, spinning through the, the galaxy, rotating. They believe that, but all that is a product of the Big Bang Theory and evolution. So after all, the universe is still expanding after the Big Bang, right? That's the theory. The God of this age, Satan, wouldn't deceive the whole world into believing that we lived on a ball flying through space as a product of godless evolution and Big Bang, would he? But we would just want to pick and choose. Oh, evolution's wrong, but Big Bang, maybe that's true. Spinning ball, that's true. No, they're all related. You can't throw out one without the other. They're all related to each other. Well, the people who are the most deceived are those that view the truth as being too ridiculous to even consider. Think about that when you talk to them about the truth. Oh, there's no eternal hell. That's ridiculous. Because they've been trained to reject it. Oh, we don't live on a spinning ball earth. That's ridiculous. Because they've been trained to reject it. But I'm going to discuss the proof from scripture and science that earth is not a spinning ball flowing through, flying through infinite space. The earth and its inhabitants are of great importance and not just a minute insignificant speck in an endless universe. If you accept NASA's theory and you accept what has been promoted in education by the Rockefeller Foundation, by the Rothschilds, by the Gates Foundation, by all these organizations that have lied about basically everything, you will believe that we are an infinite speck in a vastly huge universe and we are not important at all. And if you don't have any understanding of Scripture or God, then you can't even get into the realm of investigating God if you feel you're so insignificant. So why would they lie about this? They lie about this to hide God. I mean, doesn't it make a difference if you think you're a little dot in an expanding universe and there's all these this life around you? You would feel insignificant. But think for a second... If a person who rejects God based on evolution, Big Bang Theory, spinning ball earth theory, if they knew the truth, that God created the earth, separated the atmosphere, created the firmament, separated the waters from below from the waters from above, and then above those waters is heaven, and God was right there. You could see and understand his creation. That would cause people to take God seriously when otherwise they wouldn't because they feel so insignificant because they're fed these lies by the satanic NASA organization, which I'm going to get into in my next video. I haven't even started with uh, this stuff. So next video, I'm going to go through all the proof and be done with it and then move on to um, something else, the second lie.